Okay, let's, let's let us get started. started. Yes. Thank you very much for making time for this extraordinary university assembly. We have convened this assembly to discuss important issues pertaining to the funding of higher education and we will articulate our position on that matter. But before doing so, let me indicate that on Monday, the Minister of Higher Education and Training made a public statement regarding fee adjustments for 2017. If you read that statement very carefully, it indicates that those who are on financial aid and those students whose family income is 600,000 rand or less will be assisted by the taxpayers to meet the fee adjustments for 2017. And so, any student whose family income is 600,000 rand or less has been catered for through the contribution of the South African taxpayers. And then the minister said, those whose family income is above 600,000 will have to bear the cost of the fee adjustments. And so any discussion about fee adjustments does not have any direct impact on those whose families whose families have income of less than of uh, more of less than six hundred thousand. The minister was motivated by the principle of social justice. <laughs> and acknowledging the inequalities we have in our society. And so his view is simply that in order to advance social justice we must assist the less advantaged in our society and that those who have means must pay so any protestation against the minister's statement in that regard or any demand for an across the board zero fee increase is in a sense an argument to support the wealthy to benefit from the taxpayers. So in any debate regarding next year's fee adjustments, you can take out all the students whose family income is less than 600,000. You can take them out of the equation. Because for them, what has been announced by the minister, seen from their perspective, is a zero fee increase for them. But in real terms, it is an increase which is borne by the taxpayers of this country. <laughs> and he simply said that those who have means earning more than 600,000 will have to bear the cost. And I think we must, we must advance social justice and we must 
make sure that we do everything possible to address the inequalities in our society. Now, if one were to argue that we should have a zero fee increase for everyone, what that in a sense means is that the taxpayers of this country must subsidize the rich who can afford to pay, who send their children to private schools where they are able to pay 200,000 rand a year for more than 12 years. I think that is unconscionable. And so anyone who would argue that we need an across the board treatment, same treatment for everyone, is essentially saying we should maintain the inequalities that we have in our society. And I don't think that we can build a socially just community if we do that. We must acknowledge that what the minister has advanced or has put forward does not adequately address the challenges. It does not adequately address the challenges that face our that face our higher education system. The minister was quite clear that what he was proposing was an arrangement for 2017. He acknowledged that there are bigger issues which have been raised by the students which are legitimate. A call for free education for the poor. And he, his response to that was, there is a fees commission that is looking into that matter. <laughs> and then he said that let us allow that process to run its course. Once that has been concluded, there will be an engagement. Let me make it very clear that we all support free education for the poor. So do it. That is, <laughs> that is very important, particularly in the context of our society, where poverty, inequality, and an unemployment are at every turn. And we have committed ourselves as a university that we will do everything to support every academically deserving student to acquire quality higher education. So, look at what the minister has proposed as simply an arrangement for 2017, and we must acknowledge that it is a progressive <laughs> step in terms of addressing the inequalities. It may not go far enough, but we cannot deny the fact that recognition of the fact that a very important segment of our student population that we generally refer to as the missing middle, children of nurses, police officers, teachers, and all of those whose income is above the national threshold but not enough to can afford university education. What the minister has done is to bring about a much needed relief for 2017. And, I'm, and I think having signaled that recognition, I'm confident that going forward into the future, there will be a mechanism that will address that important segment of our society. <laughs> okay? And so that, that will be addressed. And I know that Mr. Sizun Masana is working hard on, the, on this very important segment of our society because this is a segment of students who constitute the majority in our universities. As the minister was indicating, what he suggested will cover more than 70% of the students at universities. 
And of course, as I have said, those that can afford to pay must be asked to pay. Now, yesterday and today, a group of students at Rhodes University disrupted lectures. Today, they barricaded certain parts of the university, certain buildings. They intimidated, harassed. in their offices, staff members in their offices were forced out and, and lectures were disrupted. <laughs> that is unacceptable. That is unacceptable. We do, we respect the constitutional right of every person in this university to protest peacefully and within the bounds of the law. No one, no one has a right to interfere with the rights of others. No one one has a right to interfere with the rights of others. And if we want our rights to be respected, we must respect the rights of others. That is absolutely important. Our right to free education. And so, <laughs> we do condemn in no uncertain terms any behavior that interferes with the rights of others. Every road to university student and staff deserves to be treated with respect and dignity. Every, every. every road to university student and staff should feel safe and secure on campus. Threatening a student or a staff member of Rhodes University with violence of any kind has no place in a civilized society. Let me make it very clear. We have, we have to learn to respect each other's rights. We must respect each other's rights. A university is by its very nature a democratic space where all contending views and ideas must find expression. And anyone, anyone who violates the rules or the law will have action taken against them. We cannot action action will be taken against any person who breaches the discipline the discipline of the Anyone who breaks anyone who breaks the law will have action taken against
And so I do appeal to all of you that you can exercise your democratic right to protest, but do so within the bounds of the law. Our position, our position as Road University regarding the issue of funding of higher education is very clear. And I will invite um, Professor Susan Fetter to read that statement because, because it clearly articulates our position in this regard.